G'day, Glav here and welcome back. This is video two of the Black Sheep MC Thailand wandering the paddocks of Australia on our Aussie adventure. This video covers days five through nine, 3,210 kilometres with a trip to date of 5,122 kilometres. Just before 7am, heading there's a mine straight in front of us, Mount Isa Mines that is, heading out of Mount Isa, big ride today, 770 kilometres or something, something like that. First stop this morning will be in a couple of hours in Camerwheel, which is near the Northern Territory border. Interesting. I forgot it's a public holiday today and I've just come up on a hog ride. It's a public holiday because it's Anzac Day, Australian New Zealand Army Corps Remembrance Days of our fallen soldiers. Coming in to Camerwheel. Got a fuel up here. We've just done 190 kilometres in under an hour 40. The Northern Territory border's not far off. On the Barclay Highway, and we're about to turn into the Barclay Homestead. We need fuel. Just done another stint, doing 60 k's. It's interesting, um, we're out in the middle of the outback in central Australia and all the roads are water damaged, flood damaged, yet you know we're not in the desert but we're not far off it. There's all water lying still on the side of the road and I think the floods were about, I don't know, two months ago. What the floods have done is brought out thousands of butterflies. So. We're coming up to what's known as the Three Ways, which is where the Barclay Highway finishes. It runs east-west, and the Stewart Highway runs north-south. So we're going to about to turn left onto the Stewart Highway and head down through Tennant Springs and eventually the Devil's Marbles. Here we are, Stewart Highway joining now. This highway, the Stewart Highway, essentially runs from Darwin in the very north right down to South Australia. So it goes from the top to the bottom. This is an Aboriginal sacred site, also a conservation reserve.
6.42 in the morning. We're pulling away from the Devil's Marbles Hotel. I think it's day six. Need to be careful this time of morning. This is the worst time for Rouge, is dawn and dusk. Coming up on a triple road train. This is a cattle crate. Don't want to sit behind these with all the crap that comes out the back of them. Those cattle will be going to the abattoirs. Those trucks are 54 metres long. You'll be careful of these things. They weigh a ton. That's a big Brahmin bull. They call it the Red Centre for a reason. Springs didn't purposely didn't stop here with the unrest here at the moment. I was just talking to a fellow who was a earth moving contractor. I said to him, "Is it really as bad as we see in the city um, news?" And he said, "It's worse." He said he was in town last night. He said, "There's a hundred police there, and there's all these drunken." Drug fuck ten year olds mooning around being violent and the coppers wouldn't even touch them, too scared to touch them. And to be frank, well, I had an interesting experience this morning. We stopped at Tea Tree a couple hundred kilometres back and I'm walking across the driveway at the gas station and quite a well known Aboriginal lady. She was inside when I was inside. She's an artist. Um, had a bit of an argument with one of the girls in the roadhouse and then when I'm walking back out she drives out of the driveway straight for me and clips me in the hip. Rutger was astounded, I was astounded, I wasn't hurt but Jesus I was in shock. Went back inside and the roadhouse attendant said I should report to the police. I just couldn't be bothered because we know nothing can happen. Otherwise, you'll be labelled a racist. Interesting day so far. About 400 kilometres down, 440 to go. Now we're getting into the dead centre, red centre, dead centre landscape. Rocky, red, rocky hills, red dirt. Last vegetation, very pretty in its own right. Well, after 840 kilometres today, big ride, just coming into our digs for the night. just entering Uluru National Park. There she is, the big rock to the left. Look at that, isn't she a beauty? Look at that. It's been a long time since I've been here. You used to be able to walk up that rock. Not anymore. Go green, go woke.
This is a very impressive piece of rock, this thing. Look at the size of it. As I said earlier, you used to be able to walk up here, but go woke, go green, no more walking up the rock. Seriously impressive. We're heading away from Ayers Rock, Uluru now, and we're going to go to Katatata, or the Olgas, in old language. I'm not sure, I don't think the Olgas are that far away, I think they're only about, I don't know, 30 or 40 k's from here. Happy days, what a wonderful spot this is. That's the Olgas directly to the right of us sure what the camera can see. Amazing. Leaving Uluru, Ayers Rock. This first stint's a fair whack, 250 k's into the town of Garn, not much in between. And then from there we turn south down to Coobapedi, all up, 770 k's today, big ride again. Beautiful morning, happy days. We're staying tonight in Coobapedi, an opal mining town in Australia, and we're actually staying in a hotel where the hotel rooms are built in an old extinct mine. You can see here where it's all rock, so the hotel rooms are carved out of rock. No air conditioning of course because you don't need it, because it's underground. Pretty cool, quaint place to stay one night in. Happy days. Coop 
Tubapedi is a interesting place, but I could never live here. It's just a moonscape, just dirt, nothing else. Beautiful blue sky. Interesting town, but as far as the town goes, I'm seeing the best of it in my rear view mirror as I leave. I'm just coming out to the highway and right in front there's all those mounds of dirt. It's on the other side of the highway, but essentially, essentially it's just mining, mining, mining. The town, the town's clearly only here for that purpose. We're about hundred of kilometres south of Cooper Pedy on the Stewart Highway. Just a um, hundred kilometres or nothing. It's wide open plains, rocky, sparse vegetation. Many would say boring, but it's very interesting in many ways. We just uh, pulled up. We're about 300 odd, 310 k south of Cooper Pedy. Uh, we're going to stop at Woomera, another 60 k down the road. This is Lake Hart. It's massive. I believe it's actually, whilst it's an inland lake, you can see all the salt out there. We're in the township of Woomera. This town is essentially owned by the Royal Australian Air Force. It started in the 50s in conjunction with the British Air Force where they started doing stuff on rockets. Pretty cool little place to stop, tourist place to stop. Hopefully the uh, Heritage Museum will be open today. I really hope so. It's cool. Where they've got all sorts of displays of the rocketry that they were working on. This is back in the 50s. I think it was the 50s. If it wasn't the 50s, it was the 60s. Cool stuff. There you go. It was a, Woomera was established in 1947 as a joint project between Britain and Australia. Now this is all about weapon testing and rocket, rocket launches. The first Australian satellite was launched here in 1967. They also used this place to track satellites. All the different types of rockets and bombs and weapons they were working on displayed here. Cool stuff, <laughs> love it. Yeah, including the ones that did not work quite so well. ceases to amaze me how barren South Australia is. Flat, salt bush, scrubby. Just heading into Port Pirie, only a kilometre or so off our hotel. What's in Port Pirie? It's right on the Great Southern Ocean, Great Australian Bight. But there's a lead smelter here. But like most coastal towns, they've done it up quite nice. 